All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pivot table using data from multiple worksheets in Google Sheets. Now, let's start with the bad news, I guess. The bad news is, is there is really no direct way to make a pivot table from data from multiple tabs like this. But on the bright side, we can first combine this stuff together and then just build a pivot table. So to get this done, I'm going to add a new tab here by clicking on this little plus. Let's rename this, call this uh, combined, I guess. And we're going to combine all of these tabs together. Now, all of these tabs have the same headers on top. So I'll just go ahead and make a copy of this. Go to my combine tab and just paste. That's my headers to copy the same headers. Now I need to grab all of this data and move it over to my combine tab. And the way I'm going to do that is by creating an array formula. So I'm going to start with an equal sign and I'm going to open curly brackets here to start my array formula. I'm going to move to partial data one and I'm just going to select the data right here. See, I'm not selecting the labels, just the data. After I have that selected, I'll do a semicolon. So after the semicolon, I'm going to move to my second tab, select the data again, not including the headers, semicolon again, moving to partial data three and select my data again. So same thing. If you have more, keep doing this until you're done. So I have all of this selected. I'm going to go here and do a closing for this curly brackets and hit enter. Now that should now be all of that combined nicely to one final worksheet. See, we have like 41 lines. That's basically the combination of this, this, and this. Now we're going to make this a little more dynamic. So we want this to work even if we update our data in this tab. So if we decide to add more to this, this or this tab, we want this to automatically update. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to open my formula and I'm going to remove all the end references. See how it goes from A2 through G15. I'm just going to remove that 15 to make it go all the way down. I'm going to remove this 15 and I'm going to remove this 13. So all the end row references, for all the tabs, I'm just getting rid of those. I'm going to hit enter. So that's going to combine them. Now you'll see how this weird, it looks like it's not combining, but it actually is. So if I keep scrolling down, see there's that second one. If I keep scrolling down, there's a third one because when we drag it basically all the way, it also includes all these blanks that are sitting on the spreadsheet going all the way down until the last row here. So we probably don't want those blanks there. So an easy way for us to get rid of this is to simply take this formula and wrap it in a sort function. So I'm going to put that whole thing in a sort function, close parentheses, hit enter. And the reason I'm sorting this is because when you sort data, blanks are going to be sitting in the bottom of this data set. So now if I look at this, See, it has the 41, which is what we need. And then all the blanks are now sitting below, which is fine. It doesn't really bother us. So that's good. So now once I have this all set, I'm going to go ahead and create my pivot table. So to make my pivot table auto update going forward as well, I don't want my pivot table to end here, right in this row, because by default, if I right now click here, go under data and create a pivot table and do a new worksheet. See here, it went from a one through G 41. That's no good because as we keep updating this, this is not going to work. So I'm going to delete that. And what I'm going to do instead of selecting the data range or clicking one cell in the data, which is going to end up being the same thing. I'm just going to select the entire column here from here through here, all selected. So I'm going to go under data and click pivot table. Here we go. The whole column selected new sheet looks good to me. Click create. That brings us this. 
Now we're gonna add a row. So the row I'm gonna use, let's see, in our data, let's say we want to get total sales by sales rep by region or something. So I'll go back here, uh, rows, sales rep, values, we'll do sales, and then we'll do maybe columns, region. So you can see how we get this blank here. And the reason we're getting that blank is because when we select the whole range, that also includes this blanks. So that's including that in our pivot table results now here. So we can get rid of those by filtering those out. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna scroll down and add a filter to the sales rep column, add sales rep, and we're gonna just take this and filter out blanks out of here. Hit okay, there it is. The blanks are now gone. Let's go back and try to add some data and see if this works. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hide this. You don't need to keep this tab visible, this combined thing. So I'm gonna right click and do a hide. If you need to get that back, you can click in here. It's still gonna be here, C combined. You can click on it and get it back. We don't want it to take space. It's gonna work for us in the background anyways. And uh, we get this. Now I'm gonna go back here and add something. Let's actually add a new salesperson to this list and see if this is gonna work if you have new salespeople. So I'll go to this second tab and add some sort of date here. Let's do today's date. Salesperson is gonna be Superman. Let's do Midwest. That's good. And we're gonna do some sort of sales amount. So I'll do 6,000. Let's go and check our pivot table and see if we have our Superman here. So I'm gonna scroll down and our Superman doesn't seem like it's in here. So if we open this filters and we scroll down, see the Superman is here, but it's not checked. So the problem with this method is because we were going in here and unchecking the blanks, what it really saved in a memory, it saved it has all of these salespeople checked and the rest are unchecked. And that way this is not gonna work the way we actually need this to work. So instead of doing what I did here, I'm just gonna clear and do select all here. And then I'm gonna filter by condition instead of filtering by values. And my condition is gonna be, instead of none, I'm gonna make sure that it's not empty. Hit okay. There it is. So now we have Superman here, right? We have, no blanks showing up on top. Now let's just make sure this works when we add more data to this. So I'm gonna go back again to my data. Let's add something. Actually, I'm not gonna add it here. I'll add it to the other worksheet probably just to test that. Let's add some currency formatting. Let's say we have here some more data. So Mr. Bean and Again, some sort of region and then some number. Probably make this currency just to make it look pretty. Let's go back and look. Let's see if we have Mr. Bean here. And yes, we do. So now it updates. So if we do the filtering the right way, instead of just unchecking the blanks from the list, this should work and now it's a clean, nice pivot table working off of that combination of three different tabs. So that's that. I want to go over one more example when our data is not structured this way when the columns match. So right now we have, see, these columns are going in exactly this order, these columns are going in exactly this order, and these columns are going in exactly this order, right? So what if they're not? So maybe like this tab, for example, doesn't have the state. Maybe like this one has sales over here for whatever reason, right? So they're not in the same order. Uh, so what do you do in those cases? Now to make this happen in those cases, again, we need to make our combined tab. 
Now to make this work, you want to just work with the columns that you need to actually use in the pivot table. So assuming that I'm gonna build that same pivot table I had before, what I need here, I need sales, I need sales rep and I need region. So I'm just gonna make those three columns here. So make that work there. And now what I'm gonna try to do is to combine that same thing from all of these different spreadsheets to this combined tab. So again, I start with an equal sign and I open my curly bracket and I need sales rep from partial data one. So I go here, so I need sales rep column. So I'm gonna just select this column Instead of semicolon, because I need an extra column, I'm gonna do a comma. Now, after this, I wanted region, so that's this column, comma. After that, I want sales, so I'm gonna select this third column. And then, after I got these three columns from this tab, I'm gonna do a semicolon to go to the next one. So I go to partial data two. Now in here, I have to select those three columns again in the same order. So the first one was sales rep, so that needs to be this, comma. Then I need the region, which is gonna be this, comma. Then I need the sales, which is gonna be that. Semicolon, because I got my three columns. Moving to the third tab, this one. Again, the same thing. Sales rep first, comma, region second, comma, and then sales third. Close curly bracket to end this array because we only have three tabs. I'm gonna hit enter, and that should just have one combined array out of all of that. Now again, to make this work, when we add more data, we're gonna just go back and remove all the end references here. So see this 15 needs to go, this 15 needs to go, this 15 needs to go, and the same way. So see, I'm going to each range here and I'm just removing the end reference for each one of these. Here we go, press enter. This should now combine them with those blank spaces in the middle, which is fine. Now I'm gonna take that whole thing again and sort it to hopefully organize it in a better way so we don't have to look at all those blanks. Done, combined. Now once this is ready, we're gonna make our pivot table. So I'm gonna select columns on top, data, pivot table, new sheet, looks good, rows, Sales rep, columns, region, values, sales. And then to remove this stuff here on top, again, I'm gonna go under filters, add sales rep column right here and make sure I filter by condition and choose is not empty. Hit okay. That gets rid of that. We have our nice little pivot table and that includes our Superman here. So I'm gonna go back and delete Superman to see what happens. Uh, I think that was here. We'll delete it from here. Let's go back and look on this one. Good, Superman is gone. We don't need this combined thing. So I'm gonna right click and hide it. So we don't have to look at that. Uh, let's go back and add Superman to a different tab. So I'll just do some date. So we'll do Superman. Well, I guess date doesn't matter. We're not using that anyways. Uh, we'll do Western this time and we'll do some amount. Let's go back and look at our pivot table to see if we have our Superman in Western region. So we go here, there's our Superman. This is our, is it Western? It is Western, uh, but that is not the correct amount. Did I enter the amount in the right column? No, I didn't. I have to do sales. So let's move it to the right column here. Let's go back and take a look. There it is. That's our Superman with the correct total in the right column. 
And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.